Europe's leading industrial group, Siemens, suffered several years of profit warnings and investor concern about its direction under its last boss, Peter Lusher. Now it looks like the business could be back on track after it achieved its profit guidance for the year. The man responsible for the company's biggest restructuring program for 25 years and chief executive since 2013 is Joe Kayser, and he joins me in the studio now. Hi, Sarah. Hello, thank you very much for talking to the sure. FT. Um, Siemens has been described as a super tanker which cannot be turned around in two years. Um, how fair a description is that? I mean, how far are you in the restructuring process and mm. what are the biggest challenges now? Well, even big ships can be turned around. Sometimes they take a little while depending on the cycle they are, you know, their business is at. Uh, we are never done. I think people who believe that they are done, they should not continue. Uh, so, but we are well underway. And this is the second year in a row now where we have been making good on what we promised. And uh, we are very hard working to keep it that way. And the biggest challenge now? Well, I mean, obviously the geopolitical environment is not helpful. Uh, that definitely will take a toll also on the confidence on investments. And that uh, yet uh, needs to, to be seen on how we can deal with it. The good news is Siemens, for the, first, the most part, is a self-help potential story. Mm. So we have most of it in our own hands. Mm. And we just need to work hard and diligently, and uh, then we are a good way. What's highest on your list of concerns? Is it political risk, or is it, for example, the slowdown in Chinese demand? What's what's up there at the moment? The biggest concern really is, uh, you know, the, the the fallout of those geopolitical uh, um, distress. I think I would really say distress. It's a, we've seen a new quality on the sad events in Paris. And the people who are not in a good mood, they are not going to invest because invest is about believing, yeah. about forward looking, about future. And, you know, if things like that happen, people will calm down and wait and see how it's been going. So we need to mobilize our people again and create a sentiment of trust and, uh, and, and leadership. And so that's very important. And do you think business has a role then to play in that? I believe, honestly, uh, leadership in the business, like the CEOs of companies, they not only have a role, they have an obligation to show the way. Because who else should do it? And we need to show our people, you know, there's always an opportunity. It's worthwhile going the extra mile. It's worthwhile supporting the weak ones. Uh, because this is also about giving examples. And I mean, bring, bring you back to politics here in the UK. I mean, yeah. your UK chief executive, Jürgen Meyer, has been very outspoken about how important he believes it is that Britain does not leave the EU. Is that a sentiment that you share? And if we did vote to leave the EU, what would your reaction be? Would, would you be immediately in Berlin knocking on Angela Merkel's door and saying, we need a free trade deal with the UK tomorrow? Well, I think it would probably be me knocking more on Downing 10 than, than mm. every, everywhere else. But uh, I really do hope that the, that, uh, the British people uh, are mindful about that decision. It's, it's a decision of the people and not a decision of European leaders uh, make, giving a lot of unasked advices. But if, if I was being asked about should we stay or not, I would say please stay. Make your influence, your power known in the European Union. There is a lot of things which uh, Great Britain does better than average EU. I do understand that there is a concern here in the country about how does Europe deal with the refugees, how does that all go. Um, the, the UK has very high standards in doing business, it's very effective. And so I can see the point. But it's better to help the others come along than just saying I'm not part of it. Because at the end that leads to isolation. And isolation has never been good for uh, economic development. But have you worked on scenarios of how Siemens would react in that event? I mean, would you reduce your investment in this country? No, we wouldn't. We would uh, actually stay here. We've been here for so long. Uh, 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 Great Britain is our fourth biggest country after the United States, uh, Germany and uh, China. And we like it here. We are very well received. Uh, we just invested 500 million pounds up in Hull for a renewable uh, uh, harbour, renewable power harbour. 
So we, we stay here, we have local content and uh, we uh, you know, keep it. But it's a broader issue, isn't it, particularly in the US and Europe, companies spending their cash on share buybacks rather than on new investment opportunities elsewhere. I mean, do you think that has implications for global growth? Well, I mean, uh, if it comes to our company, we, we are spending about 17 billion euro in 2016 for R&D and go to market. So it's quite a lot of money which we do to grow. I've actually, in, in the guidance for 2016, I've been one of the very few who actually have been saying in 2016 we are going to grow the business mm. in a very uh, complicated environment. So we do invest into the business, but then, you know, shareholders also have a right uh, because they own the company. Mr. Kayser, thank you very much for sure. speaking to My us. Pleasure. Thank you.